Welcome to the Upshot, Ulti World's podcast about the latest in the disc golf world. I am your host, Josh Mansfield, and joining me today, I have a very special guest host. Uh, this is the editor of Ulti World Disc Golf. Uh, that's right. Welcome the one and only Charlie Eisenhood. Hey, Josh. Thanks for having me. Yeah. First time, long time. I'm so glad to have you back on the show. Uh, you know, it's just, it, I feel like I always have to have former hosts. You know, we get Steve <laughs> on, we get Jamie on, and now we're bringing you back. So welcome, welcome back, Charlie. Yes, <laughs> I'm, I'm here. I'm here for real, Josh. <laughs> right. For this is not a pre-recorded episode. One day only, <laughs> and I'll be back in January. But I am stopping by, um, and so I will not bury the lead. Uh, I believe you already told the audience at some point. We had a lot of pre-recorded shows that yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> rolled out and rolled out. Um, but Lewis Fritz Eisenhood was born on Thanksgiving, so he's a little over three weeks old. Is he coming up on four? Is it almost four weeks now? I don't Maybe, know. No, That's, I guess tomorrow's you three that. weeks. Tomorrow's three weeks. I, the, the time, Josh... Tomorrow's will, three you weeks. Will, <laughs> you, you will know this at some point. I will know. Time becomes a very strange thing <laughs> when you're out on leave with a baby. But uh, he is wonderful. My wife, Liz, is doing great. He is doing great. And uh, he's a pretty good sleeper. And so, good. honestly, I was anticipating this being just like this hellscape of time and it hasn't been it's been really nice and spent a lot of time with family and so i'm just very thankful for that and a, a happy thanksgiving baby that's that is very encouraging i'm glad to hear that because every time i see a baby i'm just racked with like very uh very opposite emotions of both excitement and terror so it's i understand great to hear that things a lot well. of it depends on the baby you get sure sure but lewis is he's chill like okay, he will right. sleep the whole night and he only wakes up to eat okay and I'm like for the same thing he's not fussy <laughs> really so i'm i'm very thankful for that yeah. um but josh how are you i haven't had a chance to talk to you in weeks uh i'm good uh i made the fantasy playoffs denver's looking like they may make the real oh playoffs gosh, i mean denver's crazy a cr- <laughs> wild man that's what a year that's been great. Uh, Niners are looking good. Looking good. Uh, looking like the, give me that looking good. This is the best team in the league, Josh. <laughs> I don't. I don't disagree. I do agree with you there. Uh, the fraudulent yeah. Eagles getting exposed by the Forty ers <laughs> and the Cowboys. Yeah, they really were. Holy smokes! <laughs> Their defense Holy is smokes. terrible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So no, not, Niners looking good. Uh, stars are looking good. <laughs> sports are good. I'm trying to think if there's anything else personally besides sports. I don't really think there's much going on. <laughs> okay, I I had I had a well, I don't know a third life crisis. Okay, <laughs> Quar- you know whatever. Uh, yeah. By the time we're old enough, maybe it'll be a quarter life crisis. Um. But the baby was coming, and I was like, ah, like, I need to do something. So what did I do, Josh? I don't know if you can see behind me over here. This, I, These are mystery boxes. Oh, my God. I bought every mystery box I could find. That's what I did. I have Latitude, MVP, Discraft, Castaplast, like, random ones, like, Power Grip. The oh, European okay. Power Grip. I bought one and paid for the shipping here. Oh my gosh! I have them all. I have not opened any of them. Okay. I have a. I have a disc. I got a Jomez one. I got a Disc Golf Pro Tour one. I haven't opened any of them. Okay. I'm going to open them all. Okay. On camera. Okay. I'm gonna. We're gonna make a YouTube video. Okay. I'm gonna do all of them, and then I'm gonna rank them based on the value that they give. I love that. And who knows what? Uh, maybe I got. Maybe I got screwed. Maybe I got some gems. I, p- I purchased them all with my own money, under my name. I did not ask for favors. I did not ask for them to be sent for free. I paid. Ca- I paid normal retail prices for all of it. And so I have a gigantic stack of boxes. I think I'm still waiting on one or two to arrive. Okay. What did Liz say to this? She thinks I'm crazy. Okay. <laughs> did so you say? My- my plan is I want to I want to do the video okay. and be like this is where the state of mystery mystery boxes in 2023. And I'll open them all up. Let's take a look at what we got and then I'm going to sell as many of them as I can. <laughs> I, I I don't need all of the I I can't I live in New York City. It's ridiculous for me to have all these discs and hopefully there's some cool stuff that people want and mm-hmm. then, you know, 
I don't I didn't just drop like a thousand dollars on frisbees for myself. Well, uh, so ultra big... disc golf subscribers are gonna get first dibs on the good <laughs> there, stuff. There we go. Look but at that. I'm, I'm gonna auction. I'm gonna go on the auction pages. <laughs> it's gonna be awesome. Okay. All right. You know, that's Josh. Uh, that you is... personally will be able to select a number of discs, and I will just send them to you at well, no, look, no thank charge. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you. You know, I I don't know if I ever told you this, but my my quarter life crisis or whatever life. Cri- I mean, I'm in my tw- I'm in my mid twenties. Like it's, I don't <laughs> quarter know, like, life. Quarter life. That. I, I bought a motorcycle this summer. So, oh wow! Yeah, I, like I, I, I went all out. I be mean, safe. Be safe. Oh, I that, will. That's, I a, that's a riskier uh, investment than a thousand dollars of discs. That that is true. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. <laughs> um. All right. Well, let's uh, let's not dilly dally here. After we just dilly dallied for ten minutes or something. Let's not dilly dally uh, further. We've got Paul McBath joining us today, and Josh. I mean, he's. He's been kind of the news guy lately. All of it. Yeah. It, it was funny because I texted you. I was, we had reserved in the schedule a news show. So, you know, I've, I've got some guest hosts. We're going to be doing some different shows while Charlie's out. And I, I want to do a news show. And then I sat down and like wrote the news show out. And literally every piece of news in some way involved Macbeth, except for some minor sponsorship moves. So we got Macbeth on because he is, he is it. He's it. So, the lawsuit got dismissed against mm-hmm. McSees. Uh, he got he announced the chess.com sponsorship of his tournament at his course in Florida. Mm-hmm. And we're going to ask him about that and his injury status, 2023 season, player of the year, all that stuff coming up next. The Upshot is presented by Pound Disc Golf, makers of the best bag in disc golf. Handmade in the USA, Pound bags are unmatched in quality and comfort. And backed by their lifetime guarantee, you can play better knowing Pound is at your back. If you missed out on the Carlton Farewell Tour, well then you're in luck. Pound has reopened the custom Carlton program for a short period of time. Featuring the additional front putter pouch previously released only on Silvertip Carltons, the custom program has more features than ever before. If you needed any more reason to order, Pound is running a $50 discount for the duration of the Custom Carlton program, making it easier than ever to own a bag from the best in the business. But don't wait. Color options are limited, and once they're gone, they're gone. This is your last chance to grab a Carlton from Pound Disc Golf. Head over to Pound Disc Golf today to order your Custom Carlton. Pound, makers of the best bag in disc golf. Joining us now on the Upshot is Paul McBeth. Paul, uh, happy holidays, first of all, and and a big congratulations on becoming a father. Uh, I know everybody's been so excited to kind of support you and Hannah in that. And how, how are things going so far? They're going great. Um, what's today is Wednesday, so he just uh, turned nine weeks yesterday. So pretty wild and and crazy how fast it's going. But uh, it's been it's been a lot of fun. Are you seeing any personality in Pablo yet? Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent. And he's got some vocal cords on him as well, so he's uh, <laughs> he gets that from Hannah. Awesome. Well, uh, it's it's an, it's an exciting time. Thanks for for making time for us in the midst of uh, your time off in this off season. Um, we got so many things to check in with you about. You've been in the news a bunch the last couple of weeks. Uh, we'll get to that. I wanted to ask you first, just injury status. How are you doing in recovery, and and what's your time frame looking like for for next season right now? Well, so I, I was actually supposed to be in uh, Austin, Texas, right now, getting some stem cell injections into the the right shoulder. So um, at European Open final practice round, I did tear my labrum. So still uh, still trying to get that repaired. Got some tendonitis in there as well. So. Not a lot of fun. Um, tried to do the rehab aspect to get ready for Worlds, um, and that that worked out okay. But uh, didn't really see any see any progress um, as far as the shoulder issue. And then didn't play the rest of the year, and just tried to do some more rehab because I knew I, I rushed it to get ready for Worlds. And uh, I think did 12, 12 weeks overall, and just didn't see any improvement. And uh, the doctors 
first doctor didn't really didn't think there was a tear, but more so tendonitis. And I was like, there's, there's more to it. So got the second opinion and, and, uh, she went in there and saw that she's like, okay, she was a tennis player. So she kind of knew where to look a little bit more. And she, uh, she's like, yep, yeah, nope. They just overlooked it. Cause, uh, she said she could see the, the bleeding on the MRI, but they didn't, they didn't see anything. The first one, second one made more of a, a known tear. And, uh, so now they wanted to, to throw me into surgery, but it's a little too close and I don't want to continue taking more time off. So I'm going to try a little injection, see what happens and then go from there and we'll see. Hopefully, hopefully it's, uh, you know, those miracle shots, like they say. So you're anticipating starting your season in Florida, uh, at the chess.com invitational. Correct. So, um, yeah, I mentioned I was supposed to be in Austin, Texas right now, but, uh, unfortunately, um, I had allergic reaction all over Thanksgiving holiday. So I had to get some prednisone shots and I was scheduled to go today, the 17th and get, um, or sorry, today's the 13th, 13th. Yeah. The 13th. So yeah, I was supposed to go get my injection today, the 13th, but because of the prednisone shot, I had to wait eight weeks uh, post that to do the injection. So now it's scheduled for the 17th of January. So they say I should only need to take about four, four days to a week off and then go back into it. So right now I'm just going to start training. Like I'm getting ready for the tour season and uh, go from there. Wow. So if you're hoping this will get the job done, getting these shots and, but if you're still dealing with pain, let's say, you know, a couple months into the season, <laughs> would it be shut it down and get surgery time? Or is it kind of a play it by ear situation? I think it's definitely play it by ear. Um, and I'll be in Austin not long after. Um, so I'll be getting the shot first injection the 17th, and then we'll be in Austin. So if I, I need to get some more, do that one there. And, uh, you know, like you said, play, play it by ear, really. And uh, just go from there. Um, yeah, so it's not the most ideal circumstances, but it's just one of those things where it just happens, you know. And, and Eagle, <laughs> Eagle had a very similar thing a couple of, a couple of years ago, and now he's just recovering from his surgery. And I know, uh, um, yeah, he 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 stri- tried the injections, didn't work out for him. Well, no, so they did work, but they didn't heal what he needed to get healed exactly. Um, so he did his surgery, and he'll be back sometime next year, and uh, hopefully. Hopefully mine uh, healed the right spot. Yeah, wish, wishing you a uh, quick recovery and hope you can play the full season next year. Um, I appreciate it. I'm looking forward to it. I'm, I'm going to get ready for the year like, uh, like I'm going to be there from beginning to end. So, man, we, I have literally our list of topics is, is, is vast. Let's talk about the lawsuit. It got dismissed. Okay. Uh, what? What when you found out? I don't think I've actually heard you speak on this. When you found out that you were being sued, uh, like what were you surprised? What went through your mind here? And uh, were you were you worried at all about this lawsuit at any point uh, before it got dismissed uh, a couple weeks ago? Yeah. So when we first found out, it wasn't until like May or something, and the event had had happened back in March. I think maybe in February for some of the weekends. I don't remember which weekend. Um, his incident was, but, uh, the incident happened like four days after Dylan and I, um, became owners of the property. So it was like very soon after the ownership, uh, switched hands and luckily Bar- Barnett had, uh, everything in order and, uh, we had all the paperwork and everything to where in case something like this did happen, you know, everything was switched over all the all the contracts, all the insurance and everything was uh, switched over to our names in an orderly fashion. So it really made this all pretty simple to where um, I know, um, what is it, Disc Golf Law was talking about it. And, and I think you guys would might have mentioned it, um, but the whole dismissal and there were some kind of um, things that were missed on our side. But uh, we actually, as soon as this happened, we hired our own lawyers and then the insurance lawyers took over. So I guess when it was transferring hands is when that one little piece was missed. Um, And then that's why it kind of got dismissed later. So it was dismissed on, so dismissed with prejudice, but no expectation that anything else comes up. 
that you think that's kind of put behind you and the insurance is confident that's finished? Um, I mean, I don't think it's going to be, I, I don't, from what our lawyer said, it's not, it's not completely over cause he does have the option to, to file again, but, um, yeah, I just, I didn't, I didn't really want to say anything cause there is still that option, but, mm-hmm. um, I mean, you never know. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, for now, it's 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 gone and done with. And just to clarify, it's it's been dismissed without prejudice, which means that there is still the that- option to um, mm-hmm. file again. Thanks, Charlie. Okay, I misspoke. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Just 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 for clarity. Um, yep. So, as soon as we saw this dismissal happen, I'm wondering if you had like things to announce about the course or your upcoming tournament on the tour next year. Um, and whether it was uh, intentional or not, we did get some news right after that. It's actually what prompted me to look into whether the lawsuit got dismissed. <laughs> Chess.com coming on as a sponsor for what was called the Florida Open and will now be the Chess.com Invitational. Uh, what a what a surprise sponsor here. How did this come to pass uh, and that we have a, a, this Chess Disc Golf collab? Yeah, it's pretty pretty wild. Um, but yeah, to start the Florida Open, that was never our name. We we knew we were working with uh, Chess dot com and trying to get things settled, but because they had to put the announcement out and get kind of people you know hyped up for the next year, we were like, can we do you know TBD or or just something in there? And uh, they're like, no, we need to put something. So they just threw Florida Open together. Um, so it was a little weird, but uh, yeah, that relationship started with. Um, well, their CEO is a big disc golf fan, big disc golf fan, collector. I, I'm pretty sure they all got into it. A couple of them got into it during the COVID days. And um, yeah, so I think I think Eric was the one that sent me a video of his Luna collection. He's got almost every Luna there has been made. And uh, he's got a pretty cool little setup where he's got an indoor putting area. And uh, and yeah, so it was it was kind of a relationship from there pre tournament and they wanted to sponsor some of my videos and, and work together on some things. And I was just, I was honest and said, I, I, I can't do that right now. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'm not as involved as I'd like to be with uh chest. I, I enjoy playing chess. I definitely downloaded the app as, as soon as, uh, as soon as this opportunity came about and, um, yeah, it's just it's just wild how it happened, and uh, they were they were all for it when uh, I told them that we have this course, we're going to be the opener, and they they didn't hesitate at all. I mean, their their vision is huge, and and if you're if you can be at that tournament, you should be, and if you're a fan of chess, you definitely should be there because um, we got some fun things planned. So I, I've got to admit, I am an avid Chess.com user. Like I've had the app for years. I play multiple games a day. So this is one of the coolest announcements I've seen. I'm very excited to be seeing what's happening. What is chess.com covering in terms and what are they going to be? You know, there was mention of uh, some kind of crossover things that were going to be happening. You speak about wanting to be there. What are some of the things that chess.com is going to be providing with their sponsorship? Um, so that, that that's hard to say. Um, I know there's a lot of things we've brainstormed. I don't know exactly what we've locked in a hundred percent, but like the one that comes to my mind is, uh, we want to get away for, or we want to find a way for like Dylan cease to be involved in this. Cause he'll be at spring training already at that time, the time the event's going on, but we want to be able to have him virtually there playing chess with some of the guests, um, uh, whether he's on a monitor and they're there in person playing and making the moves, but we want to be able to do stuff like that. And, uh, we'll have to figure out a way to set it up. We still have, couple more meetings on, on what we can really lock down. Um, but I expect to see some of their influencers, um, with the chess.com realm at the event, um, of some sort, you know, so I think there'll be some competitiveness to that. I think there's quite a few disc golfers that are heavily involved in, in chess.com are just playing, um, on the app. And, uh, yeah, I think, I think it's, it's going to be a fun time. And, uh, I mean, luckily we we are a private venue, so we're gonna have a lot more uh, fun activities there as well. It's very exciting. I I will say I I did email Magnus Carlson's agent 
and asked him <laughs> if he was going to be there or if he was interested in disc golf or if he would come on this podcast. He got back to me. Very nice email. He said, Magnus Carlson doesn't do podcasts at this stage of his career. I think he's more into golf than disc golf at this point, but I will check in with him. So we'll see. Yep. Paul, I, yep. I imagine you could pull more strings, certainly, than oh. I can by emailing I, the agent. I, I mean, I... I, I... I will say I've talked to him a little bit. Okay. Okay. Exciting. That would be wild. Um, <laughs> so how much how much involvement do you have with this tournament? Because, you, you know, you're in an interesting spot. Obviously, you're still a touring athlete, but you have a lot more going on, right? You're involved with the Worlds coming up here with the courses there. Now you have this course that you own and this tournament that is yours. Are you like you're obviously not going to be the TD, but are, are you like managing this event? Um, I was able to like uh, help lock down chess.com, talk to a couple other sponsors um, and things like that. And I mean, doing some manual labor on the property itself. We just were we had a um, a really awesome landscaping crew there. The same crew that's been working out a cactus rock up in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. They came down. Um, Dylan was there. Uh, Nick Carl, Jeff Corns. Jeff Corns will be the TD of the event. Um, so we've had we've had a solid crew there. We were there a week, cut in two new holes. We had Calvin Heimberg come out help with uh, just give us some insight on the design. Climo was there, uh, Charlie Goodpasture. So we've had some some great people there to help, you know, say good things. Great. I mean, honestly, they've had nothing but great things to say about the course and and how excited they are. And uh, you know, as far as that side. I think the the course flow, course design is going to be great for the event. Um, and I've had my hand in quite a few things. Uh, I'm not going to be doing any of the TD side. That's out of my hands. I'll leave that up to Jeff. That's the paperwork side. And I don't want to – that's a little bit more more uh, more than I'd like to take on. But, uh, but yeah, I mean a lot of things. And, and unfortunately, I haven't been able to practice the same as, as I've wanted. Like – I've probably thrown less than a hundred shots since worlds collectively. Well, maybe, maybe about a hundred now. Uh, but now's the time where I, I really want to start to push it, especially if I'm going to be getting that injection soon here. Um, and go and go and, you know, getting ready for the season. Switching then to another focus, uh, champions cup originally rescheduled right in the middle of what is kind of been dubbed the, the European swing, the extended European swing with, uh, the mm -hmm. new elite events that will be a part of the next year's season. You were one of the most outspoken critics of the PDGA's, PDGA's choice to hold it during that swing, and it has subsequently been rescheduled for April. What was your kind of thoughts there and your decision to kind of come out against that and, and talk a little bit about your role in that? I just felt like it was almost a slap in the face to the European disc golf scene um, to have a major thrown on one of their events that was already announced. And it was, I guess it's a European elite event. Like that would never happen to an event here in the States. Like they would never slap champions cup on Idlewild or on Portland open or MVP or whatever event they would never, that would never happen. So for them to overlook that, it was kind of, you know, like I said, felt like a little bit of a slap in face to European disc golf, but I mean, they came out and said what they said and, and, uh, changed the date. Um, because of that. And I think where they changed the date is a lot better flow, uh, with the tour and how it's set up. Um, so I'm looking forward to it, uh, and, and playing it and not being, uh, affected or having to choose one event over the other. Are you planning on playing in the European swing or are you going to stay stateside this year? Well, so I was actually talking with Discraft about this this morning and kind of getting ready for the tour year um, because there have been so many questions about my injury and things like that. Um, and right now, my schedule looks like pretty much the entire DGPT tour minus two events I might miss um, just by choice. Uh, and then one of those is it, it's hard because like Des Moines and I think Swedish open are right next to each other. So it's like, once you go to Europe, you don't want to come right back and then go back to Europe. So, um, Swedish open, I think is the week before Des Moines. Um, so that would, if I go for Swedish open, I'll be over there all the way through European open. So there's only one DGPT event in that, that, uh, 
that span. And if I play the Estonian event, that'll be five straight weeks in Europe. So that's, I mean, that's a long time, but it might only be three or four events. It could be five, I think, if uh, if they add something between Swedish Open and Krokel. Do, do you like the restructuring the Pro Tour has done of like adding additional points earning opportunities in Europe and also kind of lightening the season a little bit, kicking the silvers out? Not that you played a lot of those anyway, but fewer overall events and a bigger European chunk. Do you like the changes? Honestly, I haven't really looked into it much uh, because of, you know, <laughs> sustaining the injury in, in July and then only playing Worlds for the rest of the year. I kind of pulled myself away from really looking into it and just trying to figure out what's going wrong with my body and trying to figure out how to get healthy. So I haven't really paid attention to the points. I just know that those are the elite ones to play and then the European ones that are spotlighted. So I don't actually know the, the point structures. Well, let, can you hear the baby? <laughs> yeah. We can. Yeah. Okay. If you have to go, just let us know. No, no, I think, I, I think he's hungry. So Hannah's probably grabbing it. That's, that's how they, that's how they do. <laughs> he's, he's, ador- he's adorable. Maybe he'll make an appearance. We'll see. Yeah. Oh, that would be, we would be so lucky. <laughs> Looking backwards on this season, you know, you obviously played in Europe, upcoming up, uh, up into the European Open, playing a lot of the silver events. Mm-hmm. Looking back in hindsight, is that something that you're glad you did? Would you do it again? Oh, definitely. Um, I'm trying to make my European stretch as long as possible. Um, you know, so five weeks is still a long time to be in Europe. It used to only be one, maybe two events, but to be able to be there for five weeks, potentially play five events, I'm hoping they put another event in that slot between Swedish Open and Croco, which it's surprising to see PCS nowhere on there. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, five weeks is an extended European trip. Um, and uh, I, I, I honestly love playing there. It's a different different course course flow, you know, different kind of stretch. And honestly, I don't, I don't know what it is, but I just feel like it's easier to travel in Europe. Um, maybe it's because it's more public transportation, easier to get around and things like that. It's just, it's the density there of, of mm-hmm. cities and countries is makes it so much easier. It, maybe if it's just mental, but even the flights feel easier. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I, I love being over there. Um, you know, like I said, the, the public transportation, anywhere you go, you can get food options and, and all sorts of things. And I don't know, I, I, I'm a history guy. So being over there in Europe, everything's much older than here, here in the US. So, um, you know, you, you, you mentioned PCS, you played amazing at PCS. Um, maybe the, the, the peak uh, of your year in terms of just on course performance. Um, but it really wasn't a year that was up to kind of the high standards that you've set over the last decade. Why do you think that was, uh, is that just, is that rising tide of the, com- the com- competition, uh, kind of starting to reach up towards your level or do you feel like you didn't maybe play as well as you could have? I think it's a good mix of both. Um, I think the talent, is getting more dense. Uh, I think there's a lot more players that are, you know, that 10, 1020 to 1030 range. And then there's a handful more maybe hitting 10 forties. Um, so I don't think the ceiling has been hit the same way as it was when, you know, I was playing at my best and Ricky was playing at his best. Um, I don't think it's gotten to that point overall to where we have a handful at that, that point, but there is definitely, you know, you have an off round, you're dropping five, six spots compared to maybe one or two. And, uh, I mean, as far as my game this year, it was a slow start and I was starting to cook towards, <laughs> towards the middle of the year, right when the majors were coming around. And, uh, that was the goal, you know, when I was in Europe, I, I was traveling with Joey Tamale and we were, we were filming, documenting the whole thing. And it was like, Hey, I need to use this to get ready for the rest of the year because, something's not working. So I would just be out on the course, just more so just focusing on my game, figuring out what's wrong and footwork, timing, all sorts of things. And I think that really peaked at, uh, at PCS and, and it was showing that, you know, I was over there and I was playing well. I wasn't just kind of beating nobody's like everyone thought, you know, when people came over, I, I proved that. And, uh, I was really excited for European open. I was playing really well. Um, but yeah, then, then, uh, you know, the rest of the year went the way that it did. Okay. European Open was very crazy. You had to withdraw due to the injury. Mm-hmm. You're on the bag for Anthony Barella. 
And I got I don't know if you've been listening to the podcast lately. We did give you some grief. We said you were the worst caddy of the year because of what happened to AB on 16. Now, I don't know if you think that's fair or not. I'll let you respond. Um, but, you know, Corey Ellis ends up winning. Uh, I'm just curious for your perspective on that final round, which was uh, just a, a wild one to watch. Uh, I mean, he was playing great minus the one hole. Uh, I don't remember how he finished finished the next two holes, but uh, but yeah, I mean, he was winning the tournament and he just ended up juicing them a little bit. And you can't really tell from the angle on the video, at least I don't think you can, but he was, there was this one branch that was just sticking out um, over where he really wanted to throw the shot. So he was having to throw it a little bit lower than normal. And I think because of that, he was throwing more of a straight line versus letting it stall towards the green. So that's why he kept pushing him long, 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 long. Uh, And then finally he threw the zone and that was the right disc. But I think if that branch wasn't there, he hits it first time Um, because it's a wide open upshot minus that one spot he landed in that had a branch that was sticking out over the OB and, you know, made him throw a little bit more of a direct line than kind of that floating forehand. So I don't know. I mean, I wish he could have made the adjustment after the first one and kind of saw that and it would have been a little bit more of a battle, but it was so such a small little adjustment that unless you've been in that situation, would you really know that that could be what's, what's causing it? And I mean, he's still young. So if he gets in that situation again, I think he's going to learn from it. Yeah, definitely. Definitely a tough break. Uh, one other thing, but Josh, oh, let me, I want to jump yeah, in really yeah. quick just on a B. Okay. What, what's, what's a B's potential. Do you think in the sport? I mean, he's got an extremely high ceiling. Um, it's just a consistency thing. I think, what is he, 23, maybe, 22, 23, somewhere in there, 24 at the oldest. Um, so, yeah, he's got he's got a huge ceiling. And he also, he went to school for a little bit, so he's kind of fallen behind a couple of years. Similar to Calvin, where Calvin really started to peak after a year or two on tour, two or three years on tour, and he's kind of going to be hitting that spot. So, I mean, I think he could be as good as he wants to be. Um, he's definitely working towards it. He's definitely got the build um, of a very athletic person. And, uh, I think he's what close to six, four, six, five, um, very athletic. So yeah, I think he's got the highest ceiling out of anyone out there. Um, now it's just, like I said, dedicating himself and doing it. Not many people are given that many gifts physically. Uh, we've, we've got questions about some other players, but one, I wanted to ask, you mentioned that you were traveling with Joey Tamale. Were things awkward at all? After the Estonian Open, when you know, I, and I, I like to ask this because I think you turn around the European stretch very quickly afterwards. But Joey Tamale finished higher than you did at the Estonian Open. Was was that an awkward car ride for a little while until the next event came around? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> um, you know, obviously there's memes out there and such. I forget what what we were talking about with that week, but yeah, it was kind of funny. Um, I I didn't mind going out there and, and having an off event. But yeah, it gave, it gave uh, the American fans something to, to talk yeah, about. Yeah, it definitely did. And man, did you turn around afterwards though? So I wanted to then ask, you mentioned Calvin, 2023 player of the year. We had extensive discussions on the show. There have been extensive discussions on social media about whether or not it should have been Calvin or Isaac. Who did you cast your vote for? If if you did cast your vote, um, I did not cast a vote. Um, but it depends. Like DGPT, who had the better DGPT year? Calvin, who had the better year? I'd say Isaac. So I don't know. I I mean, they're two different awards. I think I would rather take two majors than I don't know how many events Calvin won, but uh, I'd much rather have the two majors and. I mean, Isaac played well, wasn't as consistent as Calvin, but um, I don't know the two different criterias, but if I was to go overall year, I think majors are are much bigger wins than uh, any other events on the tour. How many regular DGPT stops would you need to win for you to feel like it was equivalent to a major? At least three, maybe four. I mean, what is it? There's four majors and there's 20 elite event opportunities. So that breaks down to, yeah, five. Yeah. That's, so that's, five. That's fair. Um, any, any updates 
uh, to your Discraft contract uh, in the you know either this off season or in the past couple of years, or just kind of like notes on how things are progressing with your ten year deal? You're going to defer all your uh, your income to uh, <laughs> ten years <Yeah>. after. <laughs> yeah, I really I really like the meme about the Oakland Athletics offered Sheho a dollar for the next five seven hundred million years. I like that one. <laughs> Um, but, uh, but no, no, nothing new developing, no, no deferring money. Um, more so just more things to get excited about, um, internally, you know, disc, disc releases and stuff, more stock runs going, potentially more molds, um, and things like that. So working more internally to where, you know, I've been injured, but, but I've been able to work on a lot more things, which is, which has been nice. Cause I can, you know, actually prepare for the future and, and now I can just focus on playing, uh, cause things are in line, but, uh, but no, nothing, nothing as far as my contract, uh, with Discraft, you know, still, still working on other sponsorships and such, but, uh, everything's great with Discraft. One thing that was briefly touched on earlier, worlds going to be held at your course this year. What are some of the preparations that are taking place for that course? Uh, what's, what's upcoming, uh, any changes or notes that people should see? I mean, there have been videos in the past, the one with you and Simon is the one that comes to my mind, uh, of the course, but what else should people be looking for? So, I mean, I guess I should clarify. It's not my course. I did design the course at new London tech. It is owned by Bedford parks and rec, um, which I designed that that was my first design where I was able to just like do what I wanted, uh, as far as design. Um, I wish I could add some water and things like that and a little bit more, uh, cosmetic aspects to the course. And I think it would be a 10 out of 10. It's probably like a nine, 9.5. But I think, uh, if there were things like that, that I could do, that's all I would do, but it's a great wooded track. The golf course, I've played golf there many times, um, with Chris Runk, who was his, him and his family own that course. And ever since I played golf there, when I moved there, um, I was just like, there'd be, a, this would be an incredible disc golf course. Uh, with the rolling hills and and it's a golf course so you do have to have man-made ob and things like that but it's more for the spectators and uh if you design it well you can have a lot of natural ob's uh the course is designed backwards so you're not you don't have greens in play very rarely do you have bunkers in play um so it's a very unique layout i've actually never played it if i'm being honest i haven't played it um they uh they got the design in I don't know when they got the design in, but ever since the first round and first event, I haven't been able to play. So um, I'm actually going up there for Christmas. So maybe I'll be able to see it and walk through it and see what it looks like. But uh, but yeah, I mean, I mean, I know what the golf course looks like and it's a beautiful piece of property and what they've done with uh, that golf course and that clubhouse and everything. I think uh, everyone's going to really enjoy it. And um, Virginia in September, especially if the leaves are, are changing, is, is pretty unmatched. Yeah, you any any just thoughts on how the courses are going to play? Uh, I I mean, I guess maybe you wouldn't totally know since you haven't played them that much. I have not played the golf course, um, and yeah. from what I hear, with New London, they're going to pull some of the OB for the event. They're going to get some kind of special permit from the county to take away some of the OB because that is one of the the downfalls of that course. Is there is a lot of OB, uh, which wasn't my my choice or my doing, um, but. They're going to get permits from the from the county. That's going to allow them to use the the entire property, and I think it, it'll soften it a little bit, but it'll still give that natural challenge. Because sometimes when you have OB, it'll pull you out of the trouble easier um, and put you you know in the open versus trying to scramble your way out. Some people will make the mistake of trying to scramble forward versus directly left, so um, it could actually make the course even harder. So we'll see how it goes. I think it could be all over the place. I think you can go out shoot a two under and then a ten under the next round and that'll be just fine. Um, so, um, and the, yeah, I think it's going to play fun. I think people are really going to enjoy it. I've, I've only had good feedback. I always tell people, be honest with me. If you don't like something, tell me I, there might be a way that we can work on it and change it. And, um, I'm not one that gets, uh, upset when people bash a design. So, um, I think it's gonna be fun. I'm looking forward to it. I'm I'm really happy for the Lynchburg area and, and Bedford area because uh, it was a dream when I kind of moved there to, to host a big event. So to bid for Worlds for the first time ever and then win it, I think the timing worked out. 
you know, perfectly and everything and having a uh, Ivy Hills country club on board was what really pushed it over the edge. All right, Paul. Well, uh, just one more thing. I wanted to jump back to the chess.com sponsorship real quick. How significant is this deal? I mean, we've seen title sponsorships for various tournaments, um, but you know, chess.com is actually it, for those not in the know, it's a pretty big company. I mean, this is a company that acquired uh, Magnus Carlsen's company for over $80 million. So this is a pretty substantial business. Um, are they coming in for a, a big number here? Is this a toe in the water kind of a deal? I know that you typically are not going to do small deals. <laughs> uh, I mean, they're the title sponsor and I don't think we would give that up for a little amount of money. Um, so, I mean, they're all in, they're all in and it's a, it's a great partnership um, and it's, it's a very unique crossover. Um, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to that and seeing how it plays out, but I hope they're in it for the long term. I think a lot of people are very excited and, um, we're going to see how it plays in person and plays online for people. And yeah, like I said, I hope it's a long-term deal. Um, I would love to have something like this be heavily involved in disc golf. I think it is the first time where like one, one sport has sponsored another one in some way. So it was a little, it, we had some interesting conversations about it, but at the end of the day, we're like, let's just go, let's do it. <laughs> let's, let's see how it goes and we'll roll the dice. And I think it's been very overwhelmingly positive. Um, so I'm looking forward to it. And I appreciate you guys being big fans of them. That really helps uh, sell it. I, <laughs> so I, uh, I, I promise I'll be going. putting a chess.com buzz on my wall. Like that's, Already said it. I said it to my <laughs> wife. I said, "Hey, I gotta get a couple of these buzzes as soon as they're out. I know there will be some, so don't don't worry, big fan." <laughs> yeah. yeah, but no, but yeah. To answer your question, I think it's great for the sport, and uh, um, you know, maybe it's going to get a lot of chess players into disc golf as well too. So hopefully, it grows both sides. Who's the Who's the best chess player on tour? I I don't know. I've heard. Uh, I've heard. I've heard actually a lot of the DGPT people play like Phil Delone, um, Brian Earhart. Brian's I've heard a big chess player. Uh, it doesn't surprise me that Aaron Gossage is really good at chess, Holland Hanley. Um, but honestly, that's the only four I know. And, and I feel like you don't talk about chess unless you're really good at it. Like you don't talk <laughs> about right. that you play. So, uh, well, I'm a backgammon guy, so I, I, I like chess, but, uh, I like to watch the world championships of chess. Just maybe not as much as disc golf. Um, <laughs> Paul, thanks so much. Uh, happy holidays. Please send our love to Hannah and Pablo. And uh, we look forward to uh, seeing you competing again in 2024. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Paul Macbeth with us on The Upshot. We'll be right back. All right. The, the world debut on this golf podcast, anywhere you can find on the internet, Pablo Macbeth joins us on The Upshot. <laughs> Look at this guy. Oh my gosh. He's got a lot to say. Oh, no, uh -oh. <laughs> Snuggle season. Yeah. Well, that's. Look at that. So alert. He is. He's Paul, good, Paul, you may not know this, but guy. I have a three week old here in my house. Yours? Yes. Congrats. Thank you. So. He's trying to well, he's 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 got the amazing disc golf genes, uh, but he's not. L Lewis Eisenhood's gonna get that disc golf crown in whatever twenty forty or something. <laughs> They'll be battling. They're not far. They'll be apart. battling. They'll be battling. Yep. <laughs> six weeks. Six weeks apart. So, all right. All right. Well, Thank you, Paul. No, thank you. And welcome back to the Upshot. Always great to talk with Paul. Uh, Josh, I have to say, I didn't anticipate Torn Labrum being the like biggest piece of news out of this interview that we talked about. But I mean, that's I did not realize that he had that serious of an injury. I mean, this this could be something that affects him for the next season or beyond. I mean, look what's happened to Eagle. Yeah, it's it's something that definitely was a lot quieter. I mean, we knew him Macbeth was kind of dealing with it. He obviously wasn't playing uh, anything except Worlds, but it, it's it's surprising to me that this like 
that Macbeth is taking the route that he is, given how much time he missed. Right. I, I it it feels like this would be the kind of rehab choices. And now, I mean, I'm not a doctor. Maybe this is going to work great. And I really hope it does. But if you're going to miss it, basically half a season, he was completely uncompetitive at worlds. It's surprising to me that he didn't just take that time during the miss and, and commit to just getting it all taken care of. But it sounds like he didn't realize that's true that it was a torn labrum. And, and he probably was through. expecting as is often the case, right? You know, you rest for six weeks and then it's fine, yep. right? You get hurt, you rest and that's okay. Right, that's what happened with his ankle. Mm-hmm. That's typically right what happens. And so I think when he initially found out, maybe we should have asked follow up questions about the timing of all this. But yeah, I mean, I guess at this point, it's one of those things where it's like if it's not really going to get worse, and there's like a lower intervention option, I definitely understand wanting to try that. Sure, but it does feel like we could end up, you know, having Macbeth in April be like. I'm locking in surgery. Down. I'm yep. I'm out for the rest of the season until maybe Worlds. I, you know, I I don't really remember what the, the the recovery timeline is on a labor repair, but it's not quick. Uh, very yeah, definitely a surprising piece of news to come out of the interview. So, what what else struck you though? I I think the part that stuck out to me. So when when the chess dot com news dropped. I asked myself a question that I think is is a tricky part about this sponsorship. I asked myself, is this sponsorship a result of Paul Macbeth, his influence, and the influence of disc golf, or is an executive at chess.com a disc golfer? Now, obviously, the first part has to be partially true, right? We, we know that's the case. But but was it a case of chess.com, someone there ran across the Pro Tour on CBS Sports or read an article somewhere or, uh, you know, happened to be in town at the time of a Pro Tour event, whatever, right, and found it and then decided to be a part of it or saw, you know, Dylan Cease or the the – did they come through non-traditional avenues to become sponsors of disc golf or is it the case, and as Paul said, the executives are disc golfers. I am I am very excited about the chess.com sponsorship because of my personal enjoyment of the hobby of chess and my use of chess.com. That being said, I think this is still an important highlight of the like kind of where disc golf is at as a sport. We can capture big companies. It is an investment opportunity and there can be real sponsorship money, but it is dependent upon the sport reaching them through traditional means as it reaches all disc golf players. It needs to, they they go out, they play it with their friends. They found it during the pandemic and then they want to get involved. Great. And and that is good. It's it's not Madison Avenue yet. No, but, but it's exactly it. So there, there is a cap and, and, I was very excited. I still am very excited, but I, it's very clear to me where the bounds of disc golf still are uh, because of the means by what it got there. But hey, I mean, you got to start somewhere. Start and somewhere. the fact that people are passionate enough about it mm-hmm. and feel like that it's a strong enough opportunity to put money into with their with their company. Yep. Like, you know, sure, the CEO plays disc golf, is a big disc golf fan, big Macbeth fan. Great, but like, still, that's real money. It's real like, money. It's well, not the, that money's going to spend the same way. Uh, yeah. The the but but I agree. Like, you have to have a warm lead right now. Yes. For the most part. Yeah. I mean, I be, I feel like almost all of the deals that I have heard about in disc golf, and I bet the Pro Tour has signed a couple of non disc golf people, you know, like companies who didn't have like a a personal mm-hmm. advocate within the organization to some sponsorship deals, but I don't think any of these bigger deals are happening without somebody being like, I love disc golf and I, we should do this. And here's why, Mm -hmm. because you know, like if you're just a regular, the director of marketing at some company and you know nothing about disc golf, why would you even consider Uh disc golf as an opportunity? (laughs) Yeah. Yep. Uh, It's, but, but again, it's still exciting. And, and when they're talking, when they're talking about some of their sponsored professionals coming down, I mean, we're talking people with, I mean, like Dylan C's kind of popular. I mean, 
Yes, millions, the online, millions and like, millions Twitch of Twitch followers, streaming, yes. chess world. Yes, yes, there are. It's a big deal, yes. especially since the pandemic. There, there is some real popularity and eyes that might come to the chess.com invitational by virtue of the pros, the chess pros that they're going to bring. Uh, Paul, make it sound like it's going to be a real serious event. I'm, I'm very interested. Um, Josh, are you a paying chess.com subscriber? Uh, yes, yes, I am. I'm a paying chess.com subscriber. I play uh, like four or five bullet games daily. Um, do you have to pay to play? No. It is a free. So why do you pay? Uh, just access to additional features. I mean, they do things like lessons and. Okay. Uh, and and I, I had to think about it because when in college I was paying and used it a lot. And it's I've dropped off a little bit and don't play quite as often. Um, but I, uh, it is the one of the cleanest apps and just in terms of the functionality, uh, the wait times on games are less than five seconds on every game I've ever wow. played. Uh, it's a, it's a nice looking app. It runs well on my phone. Like chess.com is the real deal. That's awesome. Yeah. It's awesome. Big, big fan. It's, it's very cool. It's cool to have a tournament that like if there was a chess.com invitation on the PGA tour, you'd be like, yeah, okay, sure. Yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> but it's disc golf. <laughs> Uh, it's cool. It is cool, right? It's going to be powered by Discraft, presented by whatever. I get the money, I guess. Um, all right, a little bit of other news to catch up on. There's been a bunch of stuff going on. Mm -hmm. Disc Golf Network 2.0. Yes, they they dumped Vimeo. See ya. Not praise be. <laughs> praise be. You know what? Vimeo deserves to lose the business. Uh, yes. 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 They they have an outdated video product in 2023, and they did a they did honestly just a terrible job with like the DGN stuff, um, and so we'll see. I mean, you know, the, the Pro Tour put out this crazy press release about blah 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 European company AWS, um, and you know what? Uh, it sounds like they spent the money mm -hmm. to to make it good, and so you know we'll we'll the crazy thing about streaming, you never know until you're actually doing it. Whether it's going to work until you have a playoff and a major, and exactly forty thousand people you, you jump on. Yeah, you can't test having fifty thousand people hit the server all at once. Uh -huh. But obviously, AWS is the backbone of like the vast majority of the internet. Uh, there's plenty of capacity there, so I think that you know they they've added all of the necessary quality of life features, mm -hmm. 1080p streaming, pause and rewind, all things that we should have already had. But like, I think Josh. This may be the end of being like, oh, I got to go watch on YouTube. Thank God it's free today so that I don't have to watch on D DGN app. I, I think you're right. Uh, you know, Charlie, here's here's what I'm going to say, though. If you do commentary this year, you're going to have to be careful because you're people aren't going to have to wait for the live stream to get uploaded and then go find your gaffes. They're just going to rewind, clip it, and it's going to be <laughs> on Reddit within 10 minutes. Now, the real question is, will they have solved the commentary delay? <laughs> That's not a Vimeo thing. That's not. No, you're right. That's a DGN thing. <laughs> please, please. No, nothing makes me feel worse than watching a clip of myself commentating on Twitter and reacting two seconds late to the thing. And I'm like, I just sound like such an idiot. <laughs> um, all right. So let's see. What else? Uh, uh, Champions Cup. We talked about oh, that in the interview, but that technically oh, wow. we have not talked about it since you left i guess that's right uh champions cup did get re re rescheduled <laughs> <laughs> they could have saved so much look <laughs> i they could have but you know what i give them credit they uh -huh. did the thing that they were they should have done uh, man champions cup is is just a lesson in how to backpedal on some really terrible decisions <laughs> <laughs> It was just kind of a blunder for them not to look at the full calendar. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that's probably what happened here. I, I think they didn't realize the European thing. Yep. And then they maybe thought it was going to be okay. And then, you know, they started getting more blowback from American pros. And uh, look, they they did they did the thing. We literally, <laughs> in our Inside the Circle segment, we said that that date that they chose would make the most sense. Yep. And they did it. It was the obvious date to choose. They should have chosen it in the first place, but better late than never. Yep. Twice. Uh, From November. Nico <laughs> bought property and is going to be building a disc golf course in Houston. Um, 
I'm trying to look up the f- the full notes here. What he said on Instagram: 130, 130 acres. That's a lot of acres. Massive. That's huge. To, to build a championship level disc golf course and pro shop. Um. So let's see. Thank you to Lone Star Disc. He said for their support throughout the year. The Houston disc golf scene for welcoming me and the entire disc golf community for sharing the passion of disc golf. I mean, it looks like some nice land. I'm not going to lie. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, the, he, he had shared a image of himself signing a contract and people were speculating about, oh, like, is he switch? Is he switching spots? I Here's a fact. If somebody posts, if a disc golfer posts them, you know, signing a contract or something and it, there's no statement about what it is, it's never a disc sponsorship. Yep. That's 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 the fundamental axiom of the upshot. There's that's axiom number one of the upshot. <laughs> We're gonna start keeping track. Axiom number one, unnamed contract signing Instagram photo, never a disc sponsor. <laughs> it's it's also it's also not January, so it definitely wasn't a switch. Exactly. Like Yeah. 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 But I, I I'm I think it's it's interesting. It's a challenging thing, right? That's a lot of land mm-hmm. in, in a metro area. Like that had to be expensive. What? I don't know. Like I maybe know. there's some bank rolling happening behind the scenes. I have a lot of questions. I'm going to ask Nico them. What What is Lone Star back. paying him? Right. right. Like, and are they involved in this deal? Like it it, w- it wouldn't surprise me if they were involved in the deal. Uh, here's what I'll say, Charlie. I think there's a real, real good chance. That in a couple of years, I'm going to quit complaining about the Texas swing. If we've got a championship <laughs> pro level designed for the pro tour course, that and that is the intention, and that's what we get. That I I agree. Throw, I mean, this is the future. Put it in Texas, it is. I, did, I can't say I expected it to be Nico Locastro paving <laughs> the way in Houston, but like putting it like pros buying their own land to build their own courses and using their fame within the disc golf world to help bring people to their course and play it it could work could i mean i don't know kale at the preserve like he's he's built a really awesome course i don't know there's been some financial challenges there but you know we've seen paul buys the course uh in florida we got nico buying the course uh, building one from scratch I, I don't know i think this is a this is a trend we're going to see continue yeah uh, we do have some sponsorship news to hit, Josh. Nothing major, though. I have to say I expected to maybe a little bit more than this because <laughs> there's not much out there right now. Um, What's Chandler Kramer? Yeah. Out at Lone Star. Mm-hmm. Um, a couple other people out at Lone Star, right? Maybe we already talked about those. No, we have not. No, no. There were no announcements. I don't think prior to you going out. Well, Deanna and AJ Carey re-signed with Lone Star Mm -hmm. since I since since I went out. Um, We have uh, Lucky Lorenzen leaving uh, Prodigy. That one, I think that's that's the the biggest biggest. surprise. Yeah, yeah, I think it's the biggest so far. Uh, Allie Smith leaving DGA. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's I, I don't think that really surprises me. She was a candidate to kind of get a bigger deal. Yeah. And I don't know where like DGA is at right now. They kind of have feel like they've lost their way a little bit. They lost their marketing guy and they kind of been quiet on social media. And, you know, they already have the sort of the big name players. So a player like Ali Smith, it makes sense to move. Uh, let's see what else. Casey White uh, added an additional year at his Disc Mania contract through 2024. Um, Connor O'Reilly leaves Latitude, signs with Lone Star. Uh, Jake Hebenheimer also leaving Latitude 64. What's going on with Latitude, man? They're making room. Something's going on, right? I mean, what's the play? They have given no indication as to what they're going to do. It has been quiet. All we have seen is them losing players. Now, they have Kristen, Mm -hmm. and that's probably... Honestly, it's enough. Like they could do nothing else and it would still be enough. But it does feel like they're I mean, are they gonna do are they gonna pull off the Gannon thing? 
they're gonna I, I, man that'd are be they crazy. going for the big splash are they gonna focus on Europe only do they get eagle but now like, I'm just throwing stuff out <laughs> I mean eagle eagle is I don't think it's any kind of done deal that he's gonna be back at disc mania mm-hmm. I think that there's definitely a chance that he is he, I know for sure that he's exploring his options as he should. And so what's going to happen there? Like, what about Nicholas Antela? Like, Discmania has got some, got some re-signings to do too, but the House of Disc thing makes it all much more complicated, I think. Maybe simpler for the company, but more complicated for, like, fans' attachment to brands. <laughs> sure. Uh, what else? Erica Stinchcomb. Signs with Infinite Discs and Thought Space Athletics for 2024. It's so another. Uh, it's really interesting to me though that TSA Infinite Discs combo that they all seem yeah. to sign. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's really interesting. I wonder how players that are chosen that option are doing. I think that would be a good, uh, honestly, Eric, topic for a podcast. I think so too. Eric Oakley seems to be doing really well with his current deal. I mean. He, I see him all the time on socials. It, he is not. I mean, he's past his prime, obviously, but it it's clear he's still. Then you got James Proctor. Yeah, so. I mean, and they make cool stamps and stuff, they, right? Oh, uh, yeah. It's it's it. I'm 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 curious, but players keep choosing this option, and it's not like the biggest names are doing it, but. It maybe is a better deal than like a lower level stock sponsorship from an Innova type. Sure. So, anyway, Josh, what did I say? I said it was going to be kind of a quiet off season. So far, it's been pretty quiet. It's it's mid November. But calm down, calm down. <laughs> here's the, here, if Eagle leaves Discmania and Gannon signs, you know, not with Prodigy, that's not really going to be a surprise. But People are going to be interested wherever he signs. Yes. If those two things happen, it's going to make it an interesting offseason, almost regardless of what else happens, right? Yes. Yes. I, I think Gannon, wherever Gannon signs, is an interesting offseason. Especially depending on the length of his contract. If he only signs like a one year, I mean, it's still going to be interesting. But I'm curious to see if somebody locks Gannon down for, for four, five years. I think that'd be... The, the interesting news you know it's funny we we talk about eagle out at Dismania and we're like man like that'd be so hard on the brand like paul Macbeth left innova like yeah but it's not the same what if disc if disc mania loses eagle yeah. and doesn't s- replace him with a with a with big Gannon. game player where are they like i feel like they could they could really like drop off the map in terms of popularity. Maybe, but I, I guess being they they feel like a brand that has been predicated on like building the hype around the player that they have under contract. Sure. Which has been a very effective marketing strategy. And they they mm-hmm. automatically I have my Discmania mystery box down there. They automatically win the exterior packaging award. Oh yeah. Beautiful red beautiful uh-huh. red box comes in the mail instead of just ugly cardboard so, box. So Charlie, here's the question. Are you going to buy company should do this? Are you going to buy the New Year's black mystery box from Discmania? Oh my god. I <laughs> they, they they I mean they've got their whole like thing going on with all these stones or whatever. I don't even keep up with all this stuff. <laughs> but like it's like pure hype uh-huh. generation. Oh yeah. So I you know, maybe they can just generate their own hype with stuff like that. But it's like very collectors markety focused stuff mm-hmm. to me. I don't know if I'm going to buy that one. Okay. I can't blame you. <laughs> Maybe I will. I I feel like I've hit my quota over here, but you know what? <laughs> I've been trying to buy as many as I possibly can, I love so that. I'll probably do it. I love that. <laughs> uh uh so anyway, that's the that's the news, Josh. It's been relatively quiet yeah. all things considered. I have not felt the need to jump on and do a podcast despite having pre-recorded shows. That was my metric for like it, so so it obviously is not crazy because that was kind of what I was expecting to have happen, but it is not. So yeah, all all in all, pretty quiet. Last thing I want to mention, yeah. uh, Kristen Tatar 
Calvin Heimberg win Disc Golf Pro Tours Player of the Year awards. Yep. Those are based on a media and player vote. Um, neither was unanimous in any of the voting. Actually, I, I shouldn't say that for sure. I think maybe the media vote was unanimous for Kristen, but the players were not unanimous for Kristen. There were some tour card players who did not vote Kristen Player of the Year. Come on, man. Come on, man. What is that? You can't be serious. Uh, it's No. That's a non-serious vote. Yes. That's like a salty vote or something. I don't know. But congratulations to both of them. I think that... It was interesting to see this, the breakdown of voting. Mm -hmm. Like for Calvin, the media voted more, was about two thirds for Calvin, and players were a little over 50%. Um, and then Isaac Robinson got the majority of the rest of the vote, but there were people who voted for somebody else, presumably Gannon. And I thought, that, I just thought that was interesting that like, it, you could see that this was like a legitimate debate yes, and that people fell on both sides. Yeah. And we heard what Paul said, you know, he'd rather have two majors. We talked a lot about that. I don't want to get back into that. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not going to go back in. Uh, Silva Sarnan and Luke Taylor win rookie of the year. Cole Radolin and Ali Smith win most improved. I think those are excellent. I, is that who we picked? Yep. I, I, I think don't that's know. We, we should look. I think that's who we picked. Um, and so congrats to, uh, to all those players for their great seasons. And I'm just going to go back into hibernation now, Josh. Congratulations. Um, <laughs> a couple of housekeeping matters next week. We are expecting to have a start our round tables. We're looking for the next two weeks. We're probably going to be having round tables. Uh, that means we're going to be having one show. So one show next week, one show the week of Christmas. So that show is expected to come out on Thursday of next week. Uh, and then no timeline right now on the show of the week of Christmas, but we are going to be in round table season. It is going to be a little bit slower. Uh, Charlie is obviously out. I'll be on some tra doing some traveling as well. So uh, just wanted to make sure and let everyone know about that for the upcoming weeks. But you know what? We can all just take a little break from disc golf for the holidays and be with our families, right? That's right. And you can open your As mystery boxes. <laughs> upshot. Oh, my God. I'm going to have to be like, what disc is this? Like, uh. um, But I am looking forward to that. Uh, so, yeah. Great. Thanks for doing the roundtables, Josh. Mm -hmm. And I will be back first week of January. Um, and you know, TBD on scheduling, obviously if there's big news, make sure you're a subscriber because the most likely place for big news conversation to happen between now and new year's is going to be inside the circle for subscribers only. So go to discgolf.ultyworld.com slash subscribe to get your subscription today for less than $4 a month. Josh, great seeing you. Likewise. Merry Christmas. You as well. Happy new year. <laughs> Take care. Enjoy I'll, time with I'll family. Thank you. You too. Thanks. I'll see you in 2024. All right. See you in 2024. Bye, everybody.